everybody. Welcome back to day nine of our 30-day EKG challenge. My name is Reed, and today we are going to build on our lecture from yesterday, which was left bundle branch blocks, and now talk about the other bundle branch and what happens when it's blocked, the right bundle branch. Don't forget that this 30-day series, we're starting from day one and building through all the different concepts and learn about cardiac physiology. So don't forget to go check out the original playlist. All these videos are linked on in the YouTube channel and follow along. So without further ado, let's jump into this rhythm. And first thing I'm going to talk about with a right bundle branch block is the idea that this is a wide complex QRS. This is part of our evaluation of a wide complex QRS. Normally, when those sinus P waves that are arising from here up in the sinus node fire off, they depolarize the atria, like we always know, creating our nice P waves. And then those signals get captured by the AV node, getting sent down the bundle of Hiss, and then down the right bundle and left bundle, which sends signal very rapidly through the ventricles to cause that QRS to fire off very quickly. And that generates a QRS that is less than 120 milliseconds or less than three small boxes right and that the, the speed of the qrs is a consequence of those his Purkinje fibers that bundle of his right bundle left bundle bringing that signal down really really fast so in a right bundle branch block or any of the bundle branch blocks but we're going to talk about right bundle branch blocks today when that signal gets to the av node and tries to go down the bundle of Hiss, it tries to go down the right bundle, but guess what, the right bundle is blocked. So what ends up happening is the signal goes all the way down the left bundle, rapidly depolarizing that territory of tissue, but then in order to, to depolarize the right side of the heart, has to go from cell gap junction to gap junction all the way back across the myocardium. In, in, in the concept of time, this is happening late. So we ended up getting late forces to the right side of the heart. So we should see QRS deflections that are indicative of those late forces. So this should be occurring later in the QRS, like towards the end. That's the cause of it widening. And then we should be able to predict what leads we should see this in. So first thing i'm going to do with this rhythm before we go into the rest of the right bundle branch block is i'm going to do what i always do and i'm going to take a look at a lead and i'm going to scan through the lead and i notice i've got a regular rhythm my rhythm is let's see what's the rate here's 300 150 100 75 60 50 so probably 58 beats per minute so a little bit slow but pretty close to regular i look in front of all my qrs complexes and i see these nice p waves marching through, driving the rhythm. And those P waves are in lead one, upright, and in lead AVF, upright. So this is a sinus P wave. Right, remember my P waves go down to the left, which is up in one, up in AVF, like we talked in our original video. And those P waves are definitely driving these QRS complexes, right? And I know that because if I look at my PR interval, which is my AV node function, I can see nice and normal PR intervals that stay the same the entire time. So I know I've got the sinus P waves driving this rhythm, but then I look at the width of the QRS. Let me find one that lands on a solid line that would make this a little easier. Sometimes I like to do that, but I don't see any that land on a solid line, so I'll go here. And I see I have a QRS that starts right here, and it ends right here. And it's a little bit longer than 120 milliseconds. So I'm gonna call that maybe 140 millisecond. Remember that the QRS duration is measured from the beginning of the first onset of the first wave to the end of the first at the end of the last wave of the QRS. So this is a wide QRS. So I have a wide QRS in the setting of what appears to be a rhythm that is driven by the atria. So that tells me that a wide QRS has been generated by some force that is going from our AV node down to the ventricles. It's conducting in a way that's causing it to widen. So I look for bundle branch block patterns. And so now we're gonna talk about what should we expect in a right bundle branch block with our QRS physiologically, right? I could teach you this steering wheel method. I could teach you all these things to memorize, but if you don't memorize the actual causes 
and the reasoning behind the waveforms, you're not gonna be able to get it right on a real EKG because I promise you, there are not a lot of straightforward, just right bone or branch block, left bone or branch block. No, there's gonna be way more considerations that you're gonna be looking for. You're gonna be looking for electrolytes at the same time. You're gonna be looking for ischemic changes. You're gonna be looking for a sinus P wave. You're gonna be looking for AV blocks. You need to understand all the waveforms. So let's talk about that now. So I'm gonna come down here to our transverse plane. Remember, this is a cut across my chest, just like this, kind of an axial cut, but it's our transverse plane. And this is where we get V1 through V6. These are precordial leads. And so if my right bundle is blocked, you can see my right bundle. If it's blocked, let's talk about what would happen. So this is my right bundle being blocked. And so let's see. We have our normal sinus P waves that fire off just like normal, like we talked about, and they depolarize the atria. Once our AV node catches that signal, we are going to try to come down the right, but it's not going to happen. We're going to go down the left bundle. The first thing that's going to happen, remember we talked about this yesterday. It's so cool. The left bundle actually supplies the septum. So you're going to see these septal perforators, these fibers from the left bundle depolarizing the, se the septum from the left side, because it's the left bundle, to the right side. So you're going to see these nice septal R waves in V1 and V2. So you're going to have these V1 and V2 nice septal R waves. That's our septal R wave. Let me make this pin a little bit smaller so that we can see it. So here in V1 is our little itty bitty septal R wave, which is this here in red. So that's the generation of our septal R wave. And then we get the rest of the left bundle depolarizing, right? So this is all rapidly conducting fibers. The left bundle depolarizes nicely. Well, then what ends up happening is in order for the signal to now reach the right side of the heart, because right now the left ventricle is kind of getting on its squeeze, but the right's not. We have cell to cell, gap junction to gap junction, trying to reach the right ventricle. And this is happening late. So it's happening later. Look at the deflection, the direction of these arrows is headed where? Towards the right ventricle. And what leads are capturing this? Yes. Mostly V1 and some of V2. So what should I expect in V1? I should expect a late positive force. Look at that. That's an R prime. So that R prime is a representation. I'll do it in blue right here. It's a representation of this blue force that I'm now drawing here. It's occurring late. It's occurring slow, so it's kind of slurred, right? So we get this, we would call this a R, S, R prime in V1. And that, remember, is our septal R wave, our S wave, which is the rest of the left ventricular depolarization, and then our R prime wave, which is late forces going towards the right. So we get an R, S, R prime here. That is very characteristic of a right bundle branch block. And so if you take a look here at V1, Look what we get. We've got little septal R wave, we've got our S wave, and then we have this nice R prime wave. There's an R, S, R prime. Look here at V2, you also see a little bit of that R, S, R prime. It's not always gonna be exactly the same, but v one's pretty characteristic, right? Remember that we get these little septal R wave. This is a septal R wave. Then you have the rest of the left ventricular depolarization as what? Remember, that's left ventricle, left ventricle is depolarizing away from lead one, so it's going to be negative. And then we're going to have this last positive deflection. That's the R prime. So I'm starting to think maybe this wide complex rhythm is a right bundle branch block, but there's actually some more context clues that I want you to think about. Let's go back to that R prime that I did in blue. Notice that the forces that generate the R prime, if I erase this, yes, they are going... These late forces are going towards V1, but look where they're going away from. They're going away from the lateral leads, V5 and V6. So what actually ends up happening is in V5 and V6, you get slurred negative waves, or another way to say that would be a slurred S wave. 
at the end of the QRS and V5 and V6, they're going to get negative slurred S waves, and that's going to represent the signal going away from them, right? It's just the opposite. It's kind of like a reciprocal change. So what ends up happening is you get in V5 and V6 a QRS complex, and before it returns to the baseline, watch this. It does this little slurred S wave. That's my slurred S right there because it's slurred because it's going it's taking a long time to go from gap junction to gap junction across the myocardium through slow conduction. What you're also going to see slurred S waves is if I go to my limb leads, guess what? Remember, we've got rapid conduction down the left bundle, fast conduction down the left bundle, and then we get slow gap junction to gap junction towards the right ventricle. So where else should I see slurred S waves? Well, these, these forces are going away from where? Lead one and lead AVL. So we're also gonna see those same types of slurred S waves in lead one and AVL. Let's take a look. Look at lead one. Lead one, zoom in. We have the initial deflection of our QRS, which is nice and sharp, and then guess what? We have slurred S wave. So that's our slurred S wave in lead one. AVL, you got a little bit of evidence here. Look at this. It's trying to get back to its baseline, but then you have this slurry return, right? And then if I come over here to V5 and V6, same thing. Look here. V5, V6, slurred S wave, slurred S wave as it's trying to return back to its baseline. And that's the right bundle branch block. So that's different from a left bundle branch block because it depends on what types of forces are going to be delayed, what types of signals are going to be blocked, right? Remember the left bundle supplies the septum. So in a left bundle branch block, we lose our septal R wave. But in the right bundle branch block, our left bundle is very highly functioning, or at least it's functional, and it's going to produce a septal R wave. So remember what the waveforms are because sometimes you can have mimics of these rhythms. You can have especially ventricular rhythms that are going to mimic this. Another concept that I think is, is incredibly important is the idea that any rhythm that arises from the atria can have a bundle branch block morphology. We give the example of sinus rhythm here, but what other types of rhythms arise from the atria, right? We've obviously got our sinus rhythm. We have ectopic atrial tachycardia. We've got our SVT, which can either be AV, AVRT or AVNRT. We've got atrial flutter. We've got atrial fibrillation. I mean, Y'all, there are, there are so many rhythms that arise from the atria that will cause potentially, or not cause, excuse me, that can also have a coexisting bundle branch block. So you really have to understand not just how to analyze the bundle branch block, but how to analyze the rhythm and ensure that this rhythm is compatible with something that is conducted from the AV node down because bundle branch, bundle branch blocks are only gonna be uh, diagnosed when the rhythm shows that it's passing through the AV node down to our ventricles. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, throw them down into the comments. And if not, thanks for watching. See you on tomorrow's EKG video. Have a great rest of your day. Take care and uh, enjoy your coffee. I feel like you can't ever do this without having a nice cup of coffee.